No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I have a very, very uh, exciting up and coming YouTube sensation on the podcast. CC Reacts is in the building. How are you doing? I am good. How are you? Very excited to have you here. You've been blown up and I, I, I'm very impressed. You, you occupy a very uh, different lane, I guess it would be fair to say, than pretty much any woman I've seen out there on YouTube. Everybody keeps telling me that. Yeah, really? My YouTube is, um, you got it. My YouTube, I started January 4th. I didn't post my first video until like January 30th. Oh, it's that new. So you're I only went, like four months in? Yeah. Wow. Not even a whole four months. Wow. And then I went viral like my second week. So, and it's like, damn. That, okay. okay. <laughs> damn. <laughs> we could just dig in right there. But I think that there's a lot of ground that we have to cover uh, before that for sure. Um, okay. So you're from Chicago? I'm from Chicago, South Side, Inglewood. Grew up on 71st and Yale. Okay. And was it crazy back then? I don't know what y'all think crazy <laughs> is because I think the shit that goes on out here is crazy. To me, Fair. it's normal. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like I know who is where. And man, I'm. I'm I have a love, a love affair with Chicago. Right. It's like Chicago is who I am. It right. made me the way I am. I mean, when we say crazy, it's just basically because there's obviously a lot of high profile rappers and not necessarily them, but like friends of friends or whoever, like who really have drawn a lot of light to the whole gang war out there and everything. But they, they always say that it's like way bigger now than it used to be. Oh, it wasn't. It's, it's tremendous now. Now yeah. it's like, God damn. You know, you got so many different uh, cliques. I don't even want to say gangs. You got so many different cliques, and it's just like everybody being to it. When I was growing up, I grew up in the I grew up in the eighties and nineties. Right. You know, so it's like I grew up in the era when when the guys got into it or they had beef or whatever. They saying get the women and the children in the house. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Don't bring that shit around here if the women and kids out here. Now, shit, they're going to blow you down with your kid. Right. They're going to shoot the grandma and the shorties. What so was it like, like when you were going outside when you were a oh, kid? I, had, I, I was the dirtiest little girl. <laughs> <laughs> you were poor like that? or No, shit. That's how you know you had fun. When you dirty. Okay. You, when you're a little kid and you go home, you go in the house and you dirty, that's how you know you enjoyed yourself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where I lived there, it wasn't no grass. Right. It was dirt. You know, I grew up on 71st and yeah, shit. We had no grass in the yard, so we out there kicking in the dirt, running, playing softball in the little vacant lots. Right. I mean, shit, we chilled. I had a ball. Going to Hamilton Park, going to the swimming pool, meeting up with the different people from different blocks, okay. you know? So your childhood was pretty fun overall, even though you were growing up over there? Yeah, shit, that was normal to us. Right. I mean, when you when you in a certain environment, you become that. Mm. So you know, it's not oh the the Cosby Show did this and I did this. I didn't look up to them people. Right. You know what I'm saying? I looked up to whoever was in my neighborhood. Okay. Those was the heroes to me. For sure. So then you started to get older. What, what was high school like? I didn't go. You didn't go. You were done by that point. I was selling, yeah, I was selling drugs. I was oh. in the street. At what age did that start to kick off? 14. 14. Well, 12 and a half. How do you get introduced to that? Shit, I grew up around drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you grow up seeing drug dealers all your life. You right. know what I'm saying? Like I said, those are the people. I didn't grow up around doctors and lawyers. I mean, we had teachers, but the teachers were the teachers. In our head, shit, you supposed to be there, you know? Right. But the people who was doing something in the neighborhood was not those people you seen on TV. It was the drug dealers. Uh -huh. So I always, I watched them from an early age, how they used to maneuver the drugs, this, that, and the third. And I always knew, like, I always had, like, a, a hustler mentality to me. Uh -huh. It just is what it is. When I was, I used to sell, like, when I was young, I used to sell, like, poems and, you know, drawings my little brother used to do, shit like that, to get money. So then when my father passed away, um, my mom was addicted. She was addicted to crack. Really? So my father passed away, and I knew, like, you can't run over me. You know what mm. I'm saying? So I knew I could run, I could run a block. How'd your dad pass away? Cancer. Oof, really? At relatively young age? No, my dad was old as shit. Oh. Hey, dad. Old as wow. <laughs> he was old as shit. Okay. And, uh, but was that always a presence in your mom's life, or did, did you notice no. a period where she got into drugs? When my dad got sick. When oh. my dad got sick, like, my dad was the only dude my mom had ever been with. Really? So, um... When my dad got sick, you know, it was hurting my mom. It had her it was hurting my mom. And one of my aunties introduced my mom to crack. Wow. It was just to numb her pain. Even though my auntie was doing that shit, she was functioning. She was able to function with it. It just took my mom down. Really? 
You know what I'm saying? So I had to fend for myself, my brother, and my cousin. We had a cousin with us at the time. And it's like, shit, it was just every man for himself. My mama was out there doing whatever she was doing, and I was holding down the fort with my, me, myself, myself, my brother, and my cousin. Right. So and it was just on some straight survival shit for when you started selling drugs? Like you literally had to put money on the table to eat? No, I lived, I, it was both, shit, mm -hmm. both. And then it just... It became to a point I became a savage with it. Like, mm. like I don't like nobody doing nothing to me. You know right. what I'm saying? So, okay, my brother didn't game bang. Mm -hmm. I did enough game banging and everything. <laughs> you so my brother didn't have to. But you formally join a gang early in your life, or how did that go? What I used to do, I used to be a bone crusher for the GDs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I was not GD. Describe a bone crusher. When I'm going to whoop bitches. <laughs> what, so if a bitch needed her ass beat, you were just going to hold it down? If a bitch needed her ass beat or some shit popped off and was out of hand, I was already violent. You mm. know what I'm saying? I was already violent. So they, hey, Pooh, my nickname is Pooh. Hey, Pooh, they holl hollering up at the porch. You know what I'm saying? Hey, check it out. And me and my little crew, we gone. But how were you able to be in that environment and not actually have to officially squad up with a, a gang or anything don't they usually like they want everybody to kind of pick a, a loyalty at some what? point right well no no i grew i'm saying what whatever neighborhood you in if you grew up in that you know it's your friends and shit mm. so i grew up in that but i was not gd okay and i love them with all my heart but i'm not gd right so what do you what kind of drugs are you selling crack heroin really mm-hmm and did it occur to you at that age that this was having a very significantly negative impact on the community and the people around you? Because, I mean, you're seeing that happen to your mom, right? I didn't give a damn. Really? I didn't, I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? I knew my mom was getting high, but I wasn't getting high. My mom was getting high, and she wasn't providing for myself, my brother, or my cousin, which his mom was getting high, too. I have to do what I have to do. I'm a kid. Mm -hmm. I can't go and say, let me get this job over here, this, that, and third. I was doing hair in the neighborhood, but I had to do what I had to do to take care of us three. Right. You know what I'm saying? Did I care about the effect that it had on the community? No. No. You didn't, you, you weren't afforded the privilege of even being able to care about that because it was so life and death for you at that point. No, I got to be honest right? with you. I don't, I don't care now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has to take responsibility for their own actions. Right. If you choose to get high, I choose to sell you the drugs. Right. It just is what it is. I mean, the, the CEO at McDonald's probably doesn't really have a hard time sleeping at night, right? You, who are you telling? <laughs> I mean, the More grease, please. <laughs> the McDonald's is killing you a lot slower than the, the crack. But you could eat a reasonable amount of McDonald's, and you could eat, you know, do a reasonable amount of crack. And end up in the same place, right? Right. I mean, we all drink a little alcohol, right? I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't drink. But I know people who've <laughs> had, yeah, I, I don't really drink either, but I can have a few drinks. Like, there's been time periods in my life where I drank a lot. And I mean, I know people whose lives have been ruined. I have good friends whose lives have been completely ruined by alcohol. I mean, it's all about how you can handle your shit, I guess, right? I guess. I guess. I don't, I don't. Listen, everybody got their own poison. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So whatever people choose to get into, that's on them. And it's real. It's your right to kill yourself, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Like when you think about like extreme sports, people die all the time skiing or snowboarding or motocross. You know, they if, die doing what they love. If you if you die doing what you want to do, that's your fucking business, right? Yep. I mean, cracks an extreme sport, I guess. Uh huh. I just know, like, I be t telling people like, I don't, I don't, I don't trust crackheads like that. Hell you know what no. I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sure you've so, seen a lot of reasons to not trust yeah. a cracker. And people are like, well, you got to have compassion. I don't got to have shit. That's not my, that's not what, I'm not Jesus. I'm not, no, if I don't trust you, I don't trust you. Mm. I'm not finna give a crackhead a hundred dollar bill and think they're going to bring my fucking change back. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can do it. And then you let me know the results. And if he runs off on you, I mean, whose fault is it? This it's your fucking fault. drug riddled crazy guy, or is it your fault for making a bad decision, you know? Yeah, and people are like, well, what happened to you in your life that you don't trust crack kids? Life, shit. <laughs> right. Life. If you do trust the average crackhead, then clearly you just need some more life experience. Listen, I trust them to wash a car. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I trust them to be who they are, but shit. Right. I mean, every, every crackhead. Have somebody that loves them. You right. know what I'm saying? I fuck with you, but I don't trust you. 
Mm. And it's just that simple. So do you think that you are always going to have this sort of like alpha male boss bitch personality? Or do you think that you developed that because you were thrust into this position where you have to take care of all these people? No, it's just me. It's I don't even think, listen, I don't even think I'm a alpha male boss bitch. None of that. That's what, that's what the world put off on me. Mm. I just think I'm CC. I'm just plain CC. I don't let other people's opinion affect my life. But you have to realize at a certain point that you clearly have a, a personality type that the average woman doesn't really embody. Because a lot of these bitches are fake. Mm -hmm. A lot of these bitches are fake. Listen, I get a lot of flack. Sometimes I, I put on makeup to do my pictures and shit like that. But when I'm doing my videos, I don't got on no fucking makeup. Mm. Dude, I got to do. I don't wake up with no damn makeup. What type of female is not comfortable looking in a fucking mirror? I can't go out the house because I don't have on makeup. Right. I can't go out the house if I ain't got all this weave. Now, to each his own, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But don't push that off on me because that's not what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? And you can't tell me why I think you should do this. Man, fuck you. Don't think you, you can't think shit about over here. I was just having this conversation with someone where as a guy, if you by the time you reach the point where you realize how much work it is to put on makeup and get your hair done and all that stuff. At that point, you start to realize that any girl who always has their hair and makeup done is a fucking nut job because that is just so much work. And it's just like how in, it, it, to me, it's like a sign of insecurity. Listen, so once again, to each its own, you right. know, some people have to live their life like that. I'm comfortable. When I was in prison, you don't have all this makeup and shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't have all this weaving shit. I got comfortable with being myself, looking in the mirror and saying, that's who I am. Do you know how fucked up I felt coming home trying to put long ass weave in my hair and trying to put makeup and shit on? And I, I can't, I don't feel comfortable unless I go out and look like this. I can't sleep in the bed with a dude all fucking night because I don't want him to see me with a, a bonnet on or some shit. Man, fuck you. <laughs> I want to be me, and I'm comfortable being me. Girl who sleeps with her makeup on, and that's some weird ass shit right there. Like, Bitch, you know, her makeup, you don't even know who she is. Like, how dumb do you think this dude is? I'm looking at you like, what the fuck are you thinking? Now, when I pop, when I choose to pop out, you know right. what I'm saying? And when I choose to pop out, cool, I'm gonna get my shit. I yeah. do my shit. But far as me just getting up and stepping out every day, and um, oh, I, I can't let nobody see me. You know, I don't got my makeup on. What? You weren't born with that shit. Mm. And I think a lot of a lot of females need to start talking to their fucking daughters and letting their daughters know it's okay and it's okay to be comfortable in your own skin. You don't need a disguise. What's an appropriate age for a, a young girl to wear makeup? Shit, I don't know. My, my kids. Maybe? Oh, really? That okay. My kid's one and a half, so I haven't had to think about it that much yet. But I, <laughs> I, was about to say 16, I, I heard somebody mention it the other day, and I'm like, fuck, I'm going to have to think about that shit one day. What the fuck? I think a lot of the times, us as adults, um, we put the pressure of the world that has um, gotten on us, we put that shit off on our kids. Mm. You know? And we put our insecurities off on our children, too. Right. So if I'm walking around with weaving shit in my head every day and makeup on, my, on myself every day, I have daughters. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What are they gonna do? What are you telling them? Yeah, what am I telling them? It's you, you're not you're not beautiful enough. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're not you're not um, pretty enough. You need this. You right. need this. You don't need shit. But then at the same time, it's like you kind of want to give them the freedom to experiment and to mess around and to look the way they want to look. And it's like it's kind of a product of us being older and jaded that we see makeup and we think, oh, you're doing that to cover up your insecurities. Because from a kid's viewpoint, it could just be. I want to put makeup on because I think it's fun to make myself look pretty or whatever. They might have like a, well, such a different viewpoint on it. I don't know. Well, Adam, if your child is 12, 13 years old, they want to put on makeup to look pretty. Why do they feel they need makeup to look pretty? That's the question you got to ask. Why do my 12 or 13 year old feel like they need makeup on to look pretty? Mm. What about them isn't pretty enough? But all the influences they're taking in, they're watching music videos, they're looking at TikToks, they, they're not going to be stupid for only so long. They're going to start to think at some point, oh, Nicki Minaj has makeup on. Okay. I want to be like her. Listen, Nicki Minaj is dope as shit and she rich as fuck. Yeah. But Nicki Minaj live her own life. You mm. know what I'm saying? Your child living your fucking crib up, <laughs> up under your <laughs> roof and up under your roof. Yeah. So why is your child more in tune with Nicki Minaj than you? Mm. But even if the kid's in tune with you, I mean, you're putting on makeup sometimes, right? 
There's she sees w- you leaving the house with makeup on to go to work or do whatever, and she's thinking, oh, shit, that's how um, the world works. Why do Nikki have more more power over your child than you? But it doesn't have to be Nikki. It's like any shit, woman Shit, why do they gonna- <laughs> have more power over your child than you? That, I mean, that's a, that's a real question. Why mm-hmm. do people look outside of their fucking house or outside of themselves how how is it possible? Listen, my my children with my flaws, everything. I'm a fucked up individual. It just is what it is. But I'm talented as fuck, and mm. I'm real. My kids think I'm the queen of the world. What are the ages on your kids? 24, 22. Listen, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> <laughs> 24, 22, uh, 19, 18, 17, oh, and two wow. grandchildren. Okay, so these are all basically adults. So yeah. they're they're. They're, they know what's going on. Yeah. And then when, even when they were children, they knew what was going on. A lot of parents are fake as fuck with their kids. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I need to shield them from the world, but you are the world. Right. There's no world outside of me right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Did, I'm not going to shield you from me. But, but, okay, did you have the thing where your first kid, you're really trying to protect them from the world, and then as you have more kids, you start to just realize, like, oh, shit, they're going to they're going to see everything. They're going to hear all the swear words. They're going to do everything. So at a certain point, like I feel like parents get less protective as they have more kids. No, no. I've always been the same with all of them. Like I go to bed about my kids, but I'm real realistic with my children. You know what I'm saying? I was a young mother. I was a teen mom. I had my first baby when I was 15 years old. So I grew up with my children and I didn't hide. I went through a whole bunch of trials and tribulations. Like I done been a stripper, I done been a robber, I done been a drug dealer, I done been a bank robber. I've been all of these things. Outside of that, I went to college. I've had my children sitting in lectures with me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I went and got my GED, and they were sitting in school with me. Right. Everything I've been through in life, I mean, the, from the biggest to the smallest, my children have been there. Right. Whether it's been fucked up, a domestic situation, this, that, and the third, my children are prepared. You know what I'm saying? And I know a lot of people say, well, why would you raise your kids like this? I bet my kids can, can survive without anything, and yours can't. Mm. Your motherfuckers are great. You know what I'm saying? I put a lot of me in them. And people say, well, you might be a fucked up person. So are you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you are too. Right. But I guarantee you my kids have street sense, and they have book sense. Right. So I didn't. I never felt the need to protect them from life. No, you need to see this shit. Because if you go out here and you don't know what the fuck is going on, you're going to be lost in the sauce. I have all girls. I never wanted my daughters to be used and abused by no dude. And they pretty. You know what I'm saying? Now, you don't know You don't know um, what's coming along with this nigga or the type of dude you falling for. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I done set up here. I know. I know what's cool, but I ain't said nothing because I want to protect you. And now you rebellious. Mm. Now you want to run away and you want to do all this extra. No, let me tell you. Let me tell you the real. Let me tell you the real. Not only that, like I said, I had my first baby when I was, what, 14, 15 years old. You know what I'm saying? You've seen me go through shit. Right. I went through it, so you ain't have to. And a lot of people ask me, well, you know, well, we ain't got to that part yet, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to skip ahead. You know, when I went to jail, when right. I went to jail or whatever, like, well, how did it affect your kids? Shit, it made them stud up. Mm. And that's, they were prepared a, that's a lot that. to put on a kid, though. What, what ages are we talking? Uh, my oldest girl was 16. Oh. My oldest girl was 16 when I went to prison. Okay. And it's, it's, it's listen, children can thrive out here if we get out their fucking way. Right. It's the parents who be blocking these kids. It don't be the kids blocking the kids. But, okay, what does a 16-year-old girl do when her mom goes to prison? She took care of her sisters. Who are what ages? Um, her, she was 16, 15, 13, and 12. Right. And was there any support network of, like, The sisters? grandmother and grandfather. Okay. And then what happened was she worked two jobs. I had a little money left over, so she had that. She so she's out of jobs. school at this point, working two jobs? No, she was in school. And Graduate. working two jobs. Wow. Okay. Yep, and working two jobs. She took care of her sisters. Yep. She worked two jobs and went to school. Wow. And right now, she's getting ready, getting ready to complete nursing school. People be like, are your children fucked up? Nah, babe, my kid's doing better than you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my, my kid, one of them is moving into her career right now, as we speak, right now. Right. Well, hey, that's the proof's in the pudding. Everybody has all their stuff, and they can say, once again, I be criticized a lot. I don't give a damn. Do I be quiet about it? Like, am I going to hide anything about me? No. No, this is my life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Your opinion don't matter. But what I am going to do is keep speaking my truth. You know what I'm saying? 
the truth is a hard ass thing to look at. Right. The truth is a hard thing to look at, and people don't like the truth. They want you to live up under their false sense, of, um, false sense of truth. Okay. That's not me. Definitely. So, okay. B- b- between, like, you just listed off the craziest rap sheet of all these different things you were into. You were a bank robber, a scam. Like, I know you didn't get locked up until you were, like, 40, right? Or- no. I was 30, 31, 32. Oh, okay. Shit like that. But still, like, pretty crazy that you made it through such a long period of time before you got caught up. Like, how, how, can you explain, like, all these things you got into and, like, how they sort of link to each other? Like, what, what was going on? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you something. How did I get into stripping? So that was where it kind of started? Like, no, I've always dibbled and dabbled so in the So you street. were selling drugs, but then you kind of transitioned into stripping? Well, I was selling drugs. I, I stopped selling drugs, and I transitioned into taking drugs into the county jail. Oh. Were you working there? Or you were no, just visiting? No, I was a kid. Oh, okay. I was taking drugs in there for some of the COs. Who put you on that? CO. Okay. And they just told you this is this little scam we got going. Shit, we knew they knew some people on the inside. I knew them. Hey, check this out. I need somebody to bring this up in there. You're gonna be able to get through. Right. Boom. Where Take are you putting shit. it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can confirm or deny yes. what I'm suspecting. No, I'm just saying, no, it wasn't stuff. What you would do is say, say if it's marijuana, if it's weed, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You take the weed, um, you grind it down, you put it in the envelope. Shake it all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Cut the envelope, and then you have somebody run over the envelope to flatten it out. Oh. Then you tape. Well, you tape it before you flatten it out. You know what I'm saying? You tape, but it has to, it has to be flat, and you line your bait, um, your belt line with it, mm-hmm. your waistline with That's it. That's smart. Okay. Line it all the way around. Now you are gonna go on the CO shift. So if they got the drug dogs out there, you ain't gotta worry about it. I was. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you what division, but motherfuckers know what I'm talking about. Right. So after you got, if they got the drug dogs out there, you ain't got to worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you go up to your visit, whoever you going to visit, and you go to a certain window. You know what I'm saying? This was the envelopes. When you go to that window, um, they have this like this foam shit, this rubber foam shit that they used to dig out. They used to dig out on both sides, and you put it through there, and they have, like, these little tweezers things. They could pull it. Now, when you're taking joints up in there, now these joints can be marijuana joints, or you could be taking heroin up in there. Pre-rolled joints? Pre- you pre-roll. You got to pre-roll this shit. Pre-roll it. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Pre-roll it, and you take it to a certain window. Same same scenario. You know what I'm saying? You take it to a certain window. That guard is on shift. Motherfuckers ain't even going to pay attention. Um, when you speak up in the county, they had these little circle circle of uh, things okay. little you know speakers right they used to take a screw out you uh, could take the screw out you stick them bitches through there you got five minutes so <laughs> how, how how much weed would you actually be able to get in there on one trip to the prison well i did two trips a day on tuesdays and thursdays oh wow and how but how much actual weed are you getting like oh because it, it's kind of hard to imagine it being that much maybe a couple ounces a trip on one trip wow okay that's pretty good mm-hmm. how much money were you making I was making twenty five hundred dollars a trip. Wow! So you were making serious money right away, even though you were young, huh? Yeah, I feel like this. If you're gonna go to jail, you might as well go to jail for something. But uh, I mean, also, if you're gonna take a risk, you might as well take a risk where you're in cahoots with the cops. Yeah. Well, you want the cops? This is fucking CEO. Oh, the don't, yeah, don't, yeah, don't, yeah. don't start talking no <laughs> shit. Now. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that. <laughs> can't put that evil on you. All right. No, no, don't put All that right. on me. All right. And so, okay, that you're doing that for how long? And you, you didn't get caught. No, no, I, I didn't get caught for this shit. Right. I didn't get caught what I went to prison for. Okay. I got told on. Right. But okay, so you, how long were you doing that for? And then you're also, that doesn't like sound like a full time gig. You're doing other shit as well? No, I was just doing that. Oh, okay. Oh, no. I had a job at McDonald's. <laughs> just to keep appearances up or what? No, I just had a job at McDonald's because I, I should have a job. That's right. what society teaches you. You should have a job. You know what I'm saying? Right. You shouldn't have a business. You should have a job. Okay. So I had a job at McDonald's, but I was hustling after McDonald's. I was selling the food like it one shit. I don't mean. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're selling? Don't put me in your establishment. You're selling weed and shit out to McDonald's? <laughs> no, I'm selling their food. The little oh. Harper High School uh, kids used to come up there, and I, um, the Harper High School kids used to come up there. I used to be selling that shit dirt okay. cheap, pocketing, pocketing the money. Right. <laughs> you're like you're in full blown like oh memories like oh just, the good old days of stealing food from McDonald's. It's not even 
the food. <laughs> Fuck stealing the food. It's the money. It's about the money. You don't have to pay these people. I worked hard. Right. In my head, I worked hard to make these fucking sandwiches. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to pay me. Right. But now, would you call yourself a business owner at this point? I am a business you owner You have employees? At this point. Yeah. So do you look at that and you're like, damn, I hope my employees don't steal from me. I they can't they, steal from me. hope they don't treat me like the McDonald's. Fuck McDonald's. Right. McDonald's is not giving me no business. When did McDonald's, listen, McDonald's like came to visit me. McDonald's made my ass fat. Right. Well, that's, McDonald's not going to let yeah. me in. I'm not gonna be one of their owners, none of that. Fuck but them. you don't want your employees to treat you like McDonald's, right? And maybe My one day, can't. maybe one day you have thousands of employees and you start to seem like McDonald's. Man, fuck CC, CC ain't having that shit for me. Shit, they say that shit now. <laughs> Listen, do you know even if you do something for a motherfucker, they still will say that? Yeah. That's the first thing a person say when 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 some shit. Man, motherfucker ain't never did nothing for me. It's like I bought everything you got on. Mm. I heard you was talking about robbing the pizza parlor. This seems like a theme. No, nah, don't put me in your establishment. That's why it's not. <laughs> I'm telling you. I could not have a job. Do not shit. hire me. No, I don't want to work. I don't want to work for these people. That's right. why I have my own shit. Okay. Um, all right. So you're, you're doing this uh, prison thing for a while. Yeah, then I stopped that. Why did you stop? Um, I was just working at McDonald's. I just started working at McDonald's, making a $5.15 an hour. It sounds like you were making more money smuggling weed. Yeah. I was making more money smuggling weed. Right. I was. It's just one of them things. I started working. No, I was making five twenty five right. at McDonald's. Five dollars and twenty five cent to deal with a motherfucker cussing you out. Bitch, I come in there and beat your ass. You in the drive through, and they talking about coming in there whooping your ass, and you like, bitch, you come here, I'm breaking your jaw. Mm. You know. And then for a manager, you done got there at five six o'clock in the morning. A manager to tell you, well, you they always right when you know they wrong. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or if a motherfucker say, well, I gave you a $20 bill when you know they didn't. You know what I'm saying? And the manager still give them that money back and your drawer is short. No. You paying me five twenty five to treat me like shit. No. I, I just remember that even though I'm trying to give you shit about disrespecting I McDonald's. I don't attention to your ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but every job I ever had in my entire life, which I was done working by the time I was like 19, I was robbing them blind and I fucking oh, hated it. So, oh, yeah, yeah. oh. Oh, yeah, no, this, yeah. this, listen, they sent us to school and every fucking thing to tell us to go out into the, go out into the world mm. and, um, you know, get that American dream. That American dream is going to make somebody else rich. Yeah. Fuck your dream. They ain't even thought about yours. You got me standing there bagging groceries for eight hours. All you're doing is giving me an opportunity to think about how to take something for eight hours. And, and, that's all you're doing. <laughs> that's all you're doing. And then just think about this. I'll be looking at some of the comments. Um, on on some of my shows, and people like, well, you you should work an honest job. I should go out here, like when I was working at Subway. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I got the dirtiest bitch coming up in there, talking. <laughs> I'm talking about bitch dirty. You just came from up under somebody's fucking bridge, right? You know what I'm saying? But you oh, coming up now, you're gonna make. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers want to want you to go work at some shit like that so they could come up in there and try to talk to you and look down on you. I hate that. Man, I will beat your ass. I will take Mr. Subway shirt off with my tank top on and right. beat your ass. Get right. the fuck out of here. You, my mom used to always tell me that she judges people based on how they treat the waiter at the restaurant. Listen, these people can't run their fucking life. <laughs> they can't run their household. They barely can tie their fucking shoes. They go to somebody's little cubicle or go shake them fries and shit over there and come and talk shit to you. Mm. I can just imagine what your comments look like because I know what mad look like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can just imagine what your comments look like. People right. try to tell you how to run your shit. Yeah. It's like, shut the fuck up. I think that's why they don't bother me that much is because they know I don't give a fuck. They can, they can criticize. It's all good. Listen, and your yo ass doing your shit while they criticize yeah. They motherfuckers stealing, they stealing somebody Wi-Fi trying to criticize you. I remember I, I was talking to somebody at one point early on, and they're like, man, I see you always in the comments arguing with motherfuckers. I'm like, God damn it. Like, I'm known for this. Now, that's when I was like, I basically stopped. Yeah, black won't let me argue with nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be like, oh, let me get this bitch. Yeah. Motherfuckers like, man, you fat. That's all right. Because right. I eat good, bitch. Yeah. You're anorexic. <laughs> Get off the noodles. <laughs> what the fuck is you talking about, ho? I like it. All right, so you, how do you get from McDonald's to stripping? Is that how this oh, goes? Oh, no, no, no. Oh. So leave McDonald's alone. 
And I end up going to Burlington Co Factory. Ooh. Not Burlington. Oh, sorry, Burlington. I just lied on you. I would never work for y'all motherfucking establishment. <laughs> I end up going to Value City Furniture and working for Value City Furniture. Okay. So when I started working for Value City Furniture, um, I was in the Eckert department, which was like a seasonal job. They had se seasonal items. Shit like, this is another 525 job. Mm. $5.25. And you got, they don't want to hire enough staff there. And so they put you in multiple departments. Mm. So you could be in Eckert, you could be in Home Goods, um, you could be in shoes, you could be in toys, you could be in all these fucking departments at once. And they won't have nobody else come in. They expect all this work and shit to be done. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And one day I was just standing there, I was like, I I'm not doing this shit. You want me to do 14 end caps? You know what I'm saying? Um, and you up in the office smoking cigarettes. Mm. Ain't helping a they rolled up your sleeve because you don't want to get you your white, nice white shirt dirty. Man, fuck y'all. So he fired me because I told him I wasn't gonna do it. His name Jay. That was his motherfucking <laughs> name. And guess what he working at right now? There. <laughs> no, the men's warehouse. <laughs> I went up in there last year. Jay! Is that you? You know what I'm saying? Is that you? Yeah. He, What's they, your message to him now that you're on No Jumper and your career seemingly taken off? Shit, back my career was taking off when I said it. Oh, okay. It was, <laughs> but listen, Jay, I'm on no jumper, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on I, the place. I'm right here. Right. I'm right here. This We're is here. My, listen, I'm right here. I'm yeah, here. Airing it up. Um, okay, so then how do you get from there to the strip club? Or am I skipping uh, steps again? So, okay, now check this out. I left there and went to this beauty supply. Mm -hmm. I was at this beauty supply. This was five, five, fifty-five. An hour. Okay. And then what they do is they take out, um, they take out all this other shit. So I'm making probably a hundred and twenty dollars every two weeks. Oof. So they they save all this, imagine this is cash, and I stayed at that beauty supply, and I was just thinking to myself, man, fuck this. And so one day, uh, this chick came up in there, and she was looking for um some weave. Uh huh. And I helped her with her weave. And I was like, well, what you do? She was like, oh, I'm a stripper, girl. I got a lockdown tonight. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I got a lockdown tonight. So she was like, you should come dance. And at this point in time, I'm real skinny. I'm like 120 pounds, long ass, red hair, weaving my hair. Mm. Like before they was wearing this, I was wearing that shit back then. Okay. Give me an 18 inch. I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> um, and so she was like, you'll make a lot of money. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna come out with you. I went out with her that night and I made so much fucking money. How much? I made $2,500. And you were making 120 every two weeks at your job? <laughs> All right, yep, we stripping, yep. Yep, and so that, that was <laughs> a, um, that first night, it was, a, um, it was a lockdown. Yeah, what does that mean? Lockdown meaning everybody come in and they close the doors and you stay in there until they open the bitches. Right. It was a private one though, cause it was for a bachelor party. So I already had a pot. A pot is when um, they already put the money in just for you to start dancing. So okay. you already made a certain amount of money before you even start doing anything. Right. And I can't dance. You can't? No, I can't dance. How'd you get by? I used to sell weed in the strip clubs. Uh -huh. So I'll go up in there before, on some real life shit, I'll go up in there before um, Everybody got there, all the females got there, and I get familiar with the dudes. And by the time I got familiar with them, shit, motherfuckers don't want me dancing with them. Mm. I never was prepared to dance. I'm not finna strip. Really? Shit. But, but it was just like a good place for you to sort of advance mm. your hustle in general? Yep. I could sell weed to them niggas, and I could sell weed to them bitches. Because mm. I don't have no habits. Right. So it's like... You weren't smoking weed even at that time? Mm -mm. You never were into drinking or any kind of drugs at all? Um, I've drank before, right. but it's just like, oh, I, don't, I don't like the way it makes you feel. I need to think. Mm. You know, I got a smart-ass mouth, and I need to be functional all the time because I don't want to say the wrong thing and motherfuckers try to slap me up because I'm drunk. Right. No, I want to be sober so I can fuck you up just in case you try me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So Respect um, for that, though, because a lot of people, it takes them a long fucking time to figure out that life lesson that it's probably better to be sober. But, Mostly sober, at least. Well, another thing, my mother was a, a alcoholic as well. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So alcoholism runs in my my bloodline. Okay. So I don't I don't I know if that's in my blood. 
it's easy for me to get turned on to those things. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it, that's just not something for me. Definitely. I'm not knocking it. If that's what you do, that's what you do. Me, it's not for me. I don't even look right with no shit in my hands. <laughs> I, I just don't. Give me, the, give me the, I don't look right with it. Right. Caffeine? I drink mainly water and juice. Mm, respect. Um, okay, so how long were you uh, doing the strip thing? And, and uh, I'm oh! sure, are you seeing crazy shit in there? Like, is it introducing you to a whole <laughs> no, wild no, 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 wait, side wait, wait. of this life? I got to tell you this. So check this out. I done, I done seen a lot of crazy shit up in the strip club. You I know, bet, I've been yeah. a part of a lot of crazy shit. Um, my first um, bisexual experience was up in a strip club. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That was my first time ever being with a girl. That's one. Um, two, I used to dance with this chick. And this bitch, she, uh, she was the type of bitch just because she thought she was a stripper, everybody wanted her. It's like you mediocre looking ass bitch. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yo ass ain't even real big. It's just big and flabby. It's like, come on, you built like a fucking penguin. But how it go? <laughs> this one night we go to this lockdown. We went to this chick we knew. We went to her party. And so, <laughs> oh, this shit funny. We You're went funny. to her party. <laughs> you are funny. And I got sick. It used to be this uh, this dude in Chicago. He was a comedian. His name was Tornado, mm. they, a.k.a. Big Daddy. Woo, woo, may rest in peace. So I'm over there. I crawl up on Tornado. I said, Tornado, I said, I don't feel good. He said, you don't feel good? He said, you want me to take you home? I was like, yeah. I had just got there. Now, how I got there, I rode with her and these two dudes. She said this dude was her boyfriend. Mm. I wouldn't know. You know what I'm saying? So he dropped me off at the crib. Now, the next day was like the Bud Billiken Parade. So I, I, I take my kids to the Bud Billiken Parade, and we at the Bud, and I see one of the dancers. So she was like, hey, you coming out tonight? I was like, yeah, I think. Why, well, what's up? She was like, I don't think you should come out tonight. Why? You know, I was like, man, you know, it is what it is. I'm coming out. What I didn't know was that lockdown I was at had got robbed. And a couple of people got oh, shot. Oh, so they thought you lined it up. Oh, let me tell you why. Because you left niggas, early. No. Not even the that. The two okay. niggas who, who we was in the car with. Oh, uh, right. Those were the guys? Yes. Mm. Shot that fucking boy like that. It took me, have it go. I go to the fucking lockdown the uh, next day. Me and the girl, uh, we up in there. And this other chick come up in there. She got some dancers. So she on the phone. She was like, yeah, you know, um, any word about, you know, the, the robbery last night? And she's talking on the phone and all this other shit. Long story short, she say they here. You want me to handle that? The now same I'm dudes? Huh? The same dudes with her? No, it's a bitch. It's a bitch. Oh, okay. It's this bitch who used to bring her girls up in there to dance. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? She used to bring her girls up in there to dance. And this bitch was, she was about that shit. Now I'm listening to to her talk and everything. All the time they saying that we set the shit up for that that party to get robbed. All the time it was the two dudes who stuck around, you know, after I left and shit, peeped, seen, and robbed that fucking place. Right. It took a long. I had to hit old girl ass and take her fucking joy from her to get up out of that bitch was gonna shoot us up in there. It's like you stole her gun. Man, I hit that bitch so hard, knocked her up off, knocked her up off her fucking feet, <laughs> and took her gun from her. So that was the end of you stripping there, or what? That was the end of me stripping. Period. Really? Fuck all How that. How many years were you actually in there? Like two years. Two years. And yeah. It wasn't for you. Your heart wasn't in it. No, my heart don't be in shit. But what I want to do is salt. But all those girls are getting drunk as fuck every night too, right? No, everybody don't drink up in there. Really? Oh, I feel like most strippers I talk to are. Usually, like, yeah, I was an alcoholic for a few years because I was stripping, and then. I'm saying, here's my thing. If you, I don't know, I can't judge nobody on their shit. Everybody get, like I said, everybody got their own addiction and shit like that. But a lot of girls, they get drunk and shit up in there to so they can actually do that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it it's something else to have a nigga you don't know pulling on your nipple. If I had to do that, yeah, getting drunk yeah, is the least like, of it. I might need a Xan to yeah, the you, face you, every night. I think that's that's one of the things that made me want to quit dancing too. Was like a dude really pulled on my nipple. I'm walking past him. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled my nipple. I turned around like yo, and he gonna bite his fucking lip. The fuck did you bite your lip, my nigga? <laughs> like, and it was my <laughs> wow. It was my cycle time too. My shit was sensitive. I don't do no shit like that. Oh fuck my did God. you know? 
<laughs> so it was time to be out of yeah, there. Yeah, I don't pull my fucking nipple off. Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then what, what do you start doing after that? Uh, what I start doing after that. <laughs> I started working at this liquor store. Oh, okay. And I'm going to leave that shit there. They allegedly... <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, they a lot of money was stolen from these people. Mm. Allegedly. Allegedly, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> She's so amused with herself. This is amazing. You're so proud of your high son. I, I, I said allegedly. They yeah. said, listen, they said I did it. I said I didn't. Right. They couldn't prove it. Damn it. Prove it. Prove it. You hey. had no proof. Yeah, you got no proof. I mean, it's been a long time, right? Listen, the shit was like $80,000. From a liquor store? Oh, it was a warehouse. Oh. Uh -huh. Shit happens. Hey, it wasn't, it wasn't me. She'll take son. She'll take son. <laughs> I ain't hiring you for nothing. You shouldn't. I got my own shit. You're going to need your own security guard who works for me to keep an eye on you. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So you robbed the liquor store Not for $80,000. <laughs> I mean, see? You just like this. Who could rob people? a liquor store for eighty grand? Motherfuckers rob a liquor to, store for like 200 to, bucks. You don't. Oh, I'm not stealing shit for 200 bucks. You found a motherfucker who's stealing 200 bucks. You bucks they fucking head. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But that's what, what dudes do. They run no, the liquor store. It's like, yeah, that, yeah. That's crackhead shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? No. No. That's how, when I was hustling, like when I was, was scamming from whatever the fuck you want to call it, if a bitch said I only need to do this for a couple of dollars, nah, bitch, we the wrong, you're in the wrong car. Right. You know what I'm saying? We going to get some money. I'm going to get some money. I'm not going to go up in here playing with you. That means you don't care about life. So you were, you're about to risk your life, your freedom. It just is what it is. But $200? Right. That's the dumb shit to me. That is dumb. That's the dumb shit to me. People are like, she's just so proud of us. I'm your damn skippy. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm going to be mad at myself. I'm going to beat myself up. No. I'm cool, right. with, I'm cool with who I am. I mean, you got away with it. What? You got away with what? Well, most of these crimes. What are you talking about? What crimes did I commit? Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever took this 80K. Yeah, I, it wasn't me. They looked on the camera. It wasn't me. I had nothing to do with that. Good enough for me. All right, okay. where do you go from there? I'm trying to figure out how you get to the point of scamming and then getting caught. I didn't get caught. Well, got told on. Yeah. All right, so look, look, look. We just going to fast forward because this has been a whole bunch of shit up I mean, now. all these different business establishments. Burlington Co. Factory was it a wasn't fake Burlington. out. That was a fake it out. It wasn't Burlington. <laughs> it was Value City Furniture. Right. You know what I'm saying? Have it go. Um, I I got cast for a reality show, and I left Chicago and I moved to Philly. Oh, and what was the reality show? Because didn't you say you're filming one now too? Um, yeah, Bricks of an Empire. It took a right. um, yeah, I paused it. Oh, but so you had one a while back? Yeah, it was it was a, a big reality show. What year are we talking? This is in 2014, 2013, 2014. Okay. And so, um. Film weekend ready. I got cast for a reality show. Boom, had to make the move from Chicago. This 2013, 2012, 2013. This was 20 like 2011, 2012. Okay. Up and down. And so I had to make the move from Chicago, and I had to go to Philly. Now when I went to Philly, I hooked up with one of my label mates. Now what I didn't tell you was I ended up getting a publishing deal, a major publishing deal in 2007. Right. Because I went and got my GED. You know, and so one of my assignments was to write a short little book or whatever, but the shit was fire, and I ended up getting signed. And what was your first book? Memoirs of a Bitch. <laughs> and you got a, a a book deal. Yeah. And I did multiple books off of that, too. How many copies were these books selling? Were they doing well? They, they did decent. Yeah, really? they did fairly decent. Wow. Yeah, my I remember my first book signing. Me coming to D.C., like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Where was it? Like a bookstore or something? It was um, it was a bookstore called Sun Something. It was in D.C. I did the D.C. Book Fair. Memoirs of a bitch. Yep. What were the What was the gist of what you were writing about at that point in your life? Well, I was listen. I just people telling you you can't do shit and you know you can and people trying to get over on you. Mm. I was in a relationship at that point in time, and motherfuckers used to really, really think I was stupid. You could think whatever you want to think, but I guarantee you, I got, I'll smart you. Mm -hmm. So my 
my book was my homework assignment. Like I said, I ended up getting signed. You know what I'm saying? But what it was based off was how I was feeling at that point in time. I was right. salty as shit because the motherfucker told me I couldn't do it. So it took me seven days to write that book. Really? You just went crazy? Just I went crazy. I did my shit, too. You wrote it on the computer or writing it no, down No, I hand? wrote it in my hand. Really? I mean, by hand, not in my hand. Wow. I wrote it by hand on notebook paper. And then I went to Kennedy King College, and I typed it on the computer. Wow. And then <laughs> we was printing it out. We was printing it out so we could get ready and send this shit off to the different publishers. Just so happened, my teacher told me, like, Facebook had something called Notes. And so my teacher, the professor I had at the time, said, hey, why don't you upload a couple couple chap- chap- chapters, not chapels, chapters on notes. Right. You know what I'm saying? I did it. And the next day I had publishing company after publishing company after. Really? They were just reaching out because it was going a little viral in their world? I don't even know what viral meant back then, mm-hmm. but yeah, they was reaching out. So I ended up signing with LaFemme Fatale. Did you even know anybody who was kind of up on the book hustle? Or were you like, no. really? No, I I didn't I didn't I didn't know anything outside of my household and that block I was on. Wow. I had never been out of state. So you must have really felt like you had kind of cracked the code right there because no. all of a sudden you've just managed to make all this money off your own creativity, right? You no. must have been pretty fucking happy. No, 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 no. no. Because okay. we're not going to talk about like I made a whole bunch of money because that don't even happen like that. Yeah, People okay. get these deals and they get these contracts and you be so fucking happy that you <laughs> right, got a deal yeah. and you got a contract that you done signed that shit and you don't even know what you done signed. You done signed your soul over to the devil. Mm. That's what the fuck you done did. I didn't make a lot. How I didn't make a whole bunch of money off neither one of my books. Oh, uh, really? I didn't start making money off my books until uh, this last book I just did. Okay. And even though I was selling hella books when I was locked up, I didn't see none of the money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers was buying a book because I was locked up, and they was like, "This bitch really bought a book. She right. really got a book." I was like, "Okay." Damn. So did that kind of make you feel sad and not motivated to write anymore no you have this bad deal going no i didn't realize how bad the deal was you gotta understand something i couldn't even pay attention to the deal because how my home environment was i was in a really really fucked up situation with your guy yeah i don't even want to talk about that shit that's just how much how bad it was It, it wasn't a good it wasn't it wasn't anything um Healthy. It wasn't nothing healthy. I'm talking about the worst time of my life. Like really? the the worst. People talk about prison and jail. No. That time right there, that was the lowest point of my life. It was an abusive situation or the shit, yeah, the shit was horrible. How, Motherfuckers know. You seem like so smart and motivated and, and cunning that it's kind of surprising to me that you would even be able to end up in a relationship where a guy was so that take was my first boyfriend. Like really? You got to understand something. This is the shit I seen when I grew up. I grew up seeing this. So when you grow mm. up seeing certain things, it's in you, and you have to you have to flip that switch like, all right, this is not what I'm going to do. And how I got myself up out of that situation was, like I said, I didn't know anything outside of that house or the neighborhood. Right. So when I went and got my GED, uh, when I went and got my GED, I graduated, and I went to get my associate's degree in media communication. Right. And I got around people who was motivated to do something. I had no motivation to do anything but fucking make babies. Mm. Make babies and learn how to cook. You know, and argue and fight. Because you had only grown up seeing so much. Like, you thought it was normal for a guy to be beating the shit out of his girl. Mm -hmm. And you didn't really have this, like, vision of what you could be, huh? No. So, like, when I got my, my book deal... Um, when I got my book deal, that wasn't no, yeah, I got a book deal. All right, I got a, I got my book deal Monday. I got to fight Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? It, it was not a good situation at all. It was not a good situation at all. Lord Jesus, it wasn't a good situation at all. So how'd you get out of it? Chrisette Michelle, Jesus, and my children. Mm. My children. Like I said, when I went off to college, um, I got around people who was... Um, Motivated. Can I get some water? Of course, yeah. I got around people who was motivated, and they were motivating me. I was meeting all these people, um, people in the radio program. I'm sorry, hold on. <laughs> I was meeting all these people, and they were cheering me on. You know, I was worth so much more, and I had no clue. Right. I'm worth a lot. I had no clue. I had no clue. Um, 
I remember the first day in class, me getting up there, and everybody, like, everybody before me get up there, and you have to tell what your name is and tell what you want to do in life, you right. know, and something that you've accomplished. So the most things that a lot of those people have accomplished was just making it to college, standing up for school. Well, I don't want to say most. I'm going to say all of them. Right. So when I got up there and I state my name and my accomplishment was I have a, a book, you know what I'm saying, that's doing numbers right now. So motherfuckers like, for real, go find it. Right. And they're like, yo, she really got a book. You know what I'm saying? So it, 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 that portion of that took me somewhere else. You know, so with that, people wanted to collab with me. I even did a few movies. Right. You know, I did a few little low-budget movies or whatever that went to the theater, and I made a lot of money off of them. Wow. But it's like... Shh. That's amazing, though, that you hadn't really had that kind of positive reinforcement. Because even when I bring up the book thing, it doesn't feel like you have the expected amount of like pride in having done that that i was expecting just because that is a really fucking big deal to do that especially early in your life and coming from your circumstances i mean but then you're in this new scenario and you're seeing people who are actually giving you like the recognition that you deserve for that yeah it's i've had so many i know who i am you know what i'm saying i think i'm a really really dope pe um, person mm. i think i'm a very dope person i think i'm very talented but I, I've had so many false stars. I have so many people that like to use me and use my talent. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It gets to the point, it's like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'm viral. I'm I'm constantly going viral. And I'm putting out work and I'm making, I'm making money. Mm. But I'm still like, I want more. But it, I still can't believe I'm sitting right here with you. Yeah. If that makes sense. You know? And then... I look forward to becoming normal to you because I think you're like a really, really good orator. You could you could do a lot on camera. Like I think that you'll probably go very, very far in this whole thing. That's can I tell you something? I really like this is the stuff that I love. This is what I love. I love this. I like I like telling stories. I like the whole movie thing. But it's like there are so many other people like me that has made it. Mm. But, like, when you reaching out to people like that and they be talking crazy and shit to you, it's like, ah, oh, hold on, bitch. Hold on. <laughs> you should just, you, you shouldn't have too much self-doubt because I would say you're, like, top 5% of human communicators that I've ran into and I've done a lot of these. <laughs> yeah, I don't have no self, self-doubt. self It's right. just, like, am I, I, there has been, I don't want, listen. I've had some bad shit happen to me in life, but I've had some magnificent shit. Mm. Only person getting my way is me. You know what I'm saying? Now, I've always been around people. God has allowed me to be around people always that has been bigger than me, that has a bigger vision for me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is the first time I'm just falling back and trusting God. Because I got a majority of my life, I'm like, all right, God, I got it. <laughs> I'm gone. But right. now, this is the calmest I've ever been. This is, I'm not on no bullshit in life, no nothing. And when I came home from prison, um, God, listen, I I end up managing Freeway Rick Ross. You know right. what I'm saying? I end up getting D-Brooks exclusive. I don't know if you know who that is, but, like, the NBA young boy, Queen Nige, he's a big-time producer. He's a, a, a big producer. Right. I end up getting him. I end up getting corporate. I, You know, I got all these big people around me. It's like, I got to keep going. I got to keep going. Then I got black. I'm on a, a boxing show daily. That prepares me. I'm in front of thousands of people every day. Okay, okay, but how do we connect the dots between you having this book and you starting to work on movies and stuff, and then you going to prison? Like, oh, we was talking about that. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> now, so I end up moving from Chicago. I moved to Philly. I end up moving with one of my um, my label mates. She was on the same publishing company. She ended up introducing me to this dude. They was taking our day with the damn reality show. You know what I'm saying? We selling books and everything, but we ain't making the money we supposed to be making off these fucking books. Okay. However it goes, she was like, well, she, you need to make some quick money. She was like, my folks, um, you can go shopping, and you know he could cash you out. I'm like, what kind of shopping? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So she was like, nah, you just go up and have a little car, little lid, lid is the ID. And go up and there, go shopping and all this other shit. So when when dudes see me, you know what I'm saying? I was a little tiny little thing, whatever, whatever, whatever. He see me, he was like, no. He didn't tell me this, but he told some other people that he was like, no, nah, I don't want her shopping. I got something more for her. 
what I'm saying? And it was banks, going to banks, doing cash advances. Mm. So my first day out, I made $42,000. That was your cut? No, I split it. Okay. But I was making forty two but between thirty eight thousand and forty two thousand dollars a day. Wow. Just withdrawing what? Five cash ten, minutes. Ten thousand. Five five thousand no, you ain't gonna draw no ten thousand shit. Oh, which you're not gonna do. Five thousand at a time. No, you don't you don't do it at a time now. Adam. Now don't you <laughs> don't you start making shit up. I'm just well, guessing. Anything I don't know. over twenty five hundred dollars <laughs> off one card has to have a um a supervisor signature. Right. Okay. So if I don't want that bitch to come from out her office, what I want to do, give me twenty five on here and give me twenty five on here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I just made five thousand dollars in five minutes. Now <laughs> five thousand dollars in five minutes off cash advances. Right. Now a lot of people say, Well you taking money out of people account, bitch, you don't make enough to have twenty five thousand dollars I mean twenty five hundred dollars off a of cash advance. Right. You don't make that much. You know what I'm saying? You go to work every motherfucking day. You got your anytime you use your debit card or something, which I'm not using a debit card. That's another thing. I just got to right. throw that out there. You get a notification to your phone. You don't make enough for me. I said I want thirty between thirty eight thousand and forty two thousand dollars a day. That ain't coming out your fucking account. Right. You know what I'm saying? Un understand the difference. I'm not cracking cards. I don't give a fuck about your debit your 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 bank account. What I want, I want some corporate shit. Uh. You know what I'm saying? I want to fuck with the banks directly. Respect. How long were you doing that for? A couple of years. Really? And making a lot of money? It sounds like you're making a ton of money at some points in this story. Well, when you make a lot of money, you spend, you, it. You spend a lot of money. Mm. And when motherfuckers know you got money, everybody got their hand out. You know, people ain't going to go out and figure out what they can do to get what they need. They're going to call you first. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um... I'm taking care of people, I'm taking care of animals, I'm taking care of kids, I'm taking care of extended family, I'm taking care of friends. It's like, God damn. Right. You know? And so, have it go, I had, I was up. I had, I made enough money, so I thought, um, outside of the shit that I done blew, I'm like, okay, I did a, a nice little run. A run is when you go off, um, on the road for some days right. and you you cash out. Hit you just hitting shit, everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was talking to, <clears throat> excuse me, I was talking to my folks and he was like, How much money you think we done made? I was like, shit, I don't know. A lot. He was like, You think we done made millions? We done made millions. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So he like, Well, what do you have to show for it? So I was like, Shit, he was like, besides cars and, you know, clothes and shit. I was like, nothing. He was like, well, I just bought a, I think he bought an 80-unit building with like a Boost Mobile attached to it and a restaurant and shit. You know, he was like, I just bought that. He was like, what you going to buy? And I'm like, damn, you right. You know what I'm saying? So I get on the phone with one of my folks from Chicago, and he on a Harold's Chicken. And I tell him, I say, um, I want to, I want to, I would think I want to buy a Harold's Chicken. You know what I'm saying? To see if I can franchise it out, this, that, and the third. He tell me, cool. He tell me how much it, it was. But do you have any reportable income at this point? That's the main thing I'm thinking about. Right. Nope. Nope. Only thing I was doing was that. Right. So and I, I was, wait, wait. Right. Another thing I was doing, I was managing artists. Oh, at this time already. At this yeah. point in time, I was managing artists. I've been around the music scene because there's so much shit that you... I mean, it's more. So that my story on my channel on the CC Reacts is telling these stories. Right. So you're just you know? hopping on all these different hustles. You're just you're doing crime, you're managing artists, you're doing books, like just yeah. whatever. You just have a shitload of energy, huh? People thought that my money, my main source of money was coming from the books. Right. Because my books was out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So people thought my money was coming from the books. You're making and like 10 cents a book, probably like 50 yeah. cents a book, something nah, like that. like a dollar and 30 oh. a book. Okay. And when I was seeing that I wasn't making no money from them books, I said, fuck them books. Right. You know what I'm saying? Them motherfuckers can stay right where they at. <laughs> There's, I'm, I'm real. I'm being real. Right. So and then I'm managing the artists and all this stuff supposed to be going on with the artists. I'm footing that cost, got janky ass business partners and everything. Mm -hmm. So I holler at my folks in Chicago, tell them I want to, you know, I'm going to purchase a Harold's Chicken. So he tell me, okay. Shit, by the time, I took him $15,000. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, <laughs> look, I took him $15,000, told him I'll bring him the other 15000 back. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That was the money I had in my my pocket. Man, shit, by the time I got ready to go back, I was on the news being indicted. Now, how did I get indicted? Yeah, for That's what? what you want to, I got it, ooh, oh. 79 counts came down. Right. 
They charged me with 79 counts. I got corrupt organization, conspiracy. I can't name all these fucking counts. I think they made up shit to get put on me. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know half of the words that I got charged with. But I went to prison on 38 of those counts. And so who told? A bitch! <laughs> Hold on! Hold on! So my folks, right, we go, we go to the fight. We go to, to the Mayweather fight. Whatever. We go to the fight and... Uh, you know, a lot of pimps, the shit was in Vegas. A lot of pimps got their holes and shit out there. And he meet a bitch. He meet a bitch. And my folks, he from Oakland. I don't know what it is about these damn Oakland dudes. They swept and down their pimps. You the know whole, what I'm saying? The whole culture. Everybody want to be a pimp. Everybody want to be a pimp. And that's not even his, that's not even him. It's just how he, his ass is. Hey, baby girl, you don't got to sell pussy no more. Come on. <laughs> I got some fuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, got some, I got something better you can do. And he done, he done met this bitch and he done bought this fucking wreck into the motherfucking camp. You know what I'm saying? Have it go. I was getting ready to stop doing all the little hustling shit. So I get a phone call from him. Um, he's asking me, you know, like, hey, I need you to, you know, take this bitch and show her, show her what you do. I tell his ass no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You take the bitch. You're above being the teacher. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But this is my folks. Now, this is my folks. And he's still my folks. I'm this is my folks to this day. Right. You know what I'm saying? I love the shit out of Fat Boy. But I'm no, you know what I'm saying? No, no. So he, yeah, you, you take her, you know what I'm saying? Take her. No, no. So I'm arguing with him on the phone. Like, no, no, I'm not taking this bitch. I'm not taking her. You know what I'm saying? That's not what I do. You ain't never, I ain't never did this shit. No. Right. Long story, he called one of my people, one of our mutual people. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who showed me how to do some shit. And um, he called me. He said, like, hey, he say, he say, man, have I ever told you anything wrong? He ain't never told me shit wrong. You know what I'm saying? He say, right. like, you getting ready to stop. You got to pass the torch. Teach somebody else what you know how to do. I knew how to do everything. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know how to do everything. It just is what it is. And that shit would never go away. And so him telling me that, man, you, I argue when I don't like doing shit. Him telling me that, I say, okay, cool. Man, when I say the trip was so bad from the time this ugly bitch got into the car. <laughs> what, you just didn't have any street smarts? It's not even that. The bitch was a rat anyway. She was already a fucking confidential informant. She told you that or you no! figured that out later? No, I found out later. Right. You know what I'm saying? He he broke some rules. The certain shit. We all broke rules when it came to this bitch. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For one, she wasn't supposed to be around me. Then he had her in places she wasn't supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Long... We we come up with a plan. We said we're gonna go to Pittsburgh. Wiz Khalifa was coming in town, so we had a reason to be from out of town to be there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We get lost in 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 dirty ass Pennsylvania. We get lost, and I'm talking about the first hotel we pull up into. I'm talking about first of all, we driving through some shit. It looked like the hill have eyes. You know what I'm saying? The people look like they cold, man. They're scared to come outside. Um, just gloomy. It's just gloomy. Right. You know, when none of my cars working, none of them. Mm. So I had an attitude because it's where my my work don't hit. So we get to um we get to some place. It's a hotel, like a Holiday Inn or some shit. It's it's like creepy up in there. You know what I'm saying? That was the omen right there. Bitch, turn around. You know what I'm saying? I want to turn around. That night. She want to stay up on the phone. She on Vegas time. Uh -huh. We in um, Pennsylvania. She want to stay up on the phone all night. You know, we try to get some sleep. Anyway, when we wake up in that morning, when we wake up the next morning, I knew why it was like gloomy up in there. It's a fucking cemetery downstairs. Mm. You know, it's like, come on, man. When you hustling, you supposed to always listen to that first mind. Mm. When you're stealing, listen to that first fucking... God damn, when you doing some shit you're not supposed to do, listen to that first mind. Right. You know? We go from there, um, we finally get to, I want to say it's, it's Robinson Township. It's Robinson Township, I'm pretty sure. But it was, they got another mall out there. Anyway, she want to, we finally will know, we, we check into this hotel, a decent hotel. Um, we go get some, we go like to Joe's Crab Shack, get some shit to eat. Um, we go shopping in a little mall, grab a whole bunch of shit. It could have been Ross Park Mall or some shit like that. But we got like Giuseppe's, all this other little shit. Anyway, that shit don't matter. Now, the next fucking day, I'm telling you, everything is saying, yo, don't do nothing. I'm telling my people, like, I don't feel right. I don't feel right. Have it go. We, my plan was to, I tell her, I say, look, I'm finna drop you off. You know, you go on your way, I'ma go mine. You know? 
Okay, that's the plan. We go. We supposed to go get something to eat. We go get something to eat. When we come back from getting something to eat, she's talking about she want to try a bank. The bank was TD. Okay, she going at first bank. They say their cash advance machine was down. She want to try another bank. Bitch, that's not the plan. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's not the plan. She going to the next bank. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. When she going to this next damn bank, she in there for like five minutes. She in there for five minutes. She come out. All the time she left her wallet. So when she get her wallet, like I'm on the phone with my folks telling her, like, telling him, like, I don't, I'm not feeling this shit. He like, leave the bitch. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I just can't leave her. She get her wallet. When she walking back into the bank, she throwing receipts and shit away. I will find this out later. You know what I'm saying? I found this out in the paperwork. She throwing receipts and shit away. She go up in the bank. Now, this bank is in, like, this parking lot, like this Home Depot, this, this grill restaurant, all this other shit. So I'm parked. You know what I'm saying? Have it go. She up in that motherfucker for a long time. I'm on the phone, like, 10 minutes. I'm like, damn, this bitch ain't came out yet. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, man, he was like, check on her, whatever. I hang up from him. I call her on my other phone. She don't answer the phone. One of the things is, well, two of the things. When a bitch goes out the bank, you supposed to always be on the phone with them so you can know what's going on. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You are the ears and the eyes on the outside. They are the ears and the eyes on the inside. I broke that, you know? So um, she didn't answer the phone. Next thing I know, a fucking police officer, a police car speed up in there and block off the entrance. <laughs> I, I hop in the driver's side seat <laughs> <laughs> and move the fucking truck, move the, uh, move the van around. You know what I'm saying? Move the car, the truck around so I can see. So when he go up in there, I say, yo, this bitch, she, she gone. Right. You know what I'm saying? I call my folks. This bitch is gone. You know what I'm saying? He said, get up out of there. I was already gone. Right. I was already gone. I ran back to the hotel. The hotel, you got to go down this little overpass, come back up. I ran up the motherfucker. I ain't run up no damn stairs. I'm fa- I wasn't running up no stairs. I was fat. <laughs> okay. I wasn't running up no stairs. I went up them stairs, got them bags, you know what I'm saying? Grabbed her bag, got a- everything up out of there. By the time I came back downstairs, the police was coming up in the parking lot. The bitch started telling them inside the bank. Wow. It took six months for them to indict me. You thought you got away with it, or you knew you were waiting for that? No, that's not what happened. So I had to get the bitch a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? The first lawyer, $15,000. Um, when I called to check and see what had happened, man, she didn't want to be bonded out of jail, which should indicate right then and there she's telling. So, <laughs> so um, when I called to check on what happened at her court date, the lawyer told me I can no longer talk to you. You're a co-defendant. I ain't never been in jail the day before in my life. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I called my folks, the bitch telling. She not telling. She's telling. She not telling. I told him what the lawyer said. He said, fire the dude. I found, paid another $15,000, get another lawyer. You know what I'm saying? But shit, it's too late. He had been on the phone with the bitch. Um, she on the little jail calls and everything, and they just having normal conversations, but the conversations is about the shit. They done recorded everything. You just got a little bit more. Oh, they done recorded everything. Really? And so they handed down them indictments six months later. Wow. And so how much time did you end up getting? Um, they initially gave me 10 years. And how that did, shit that, was how did that feel? I don't know. Like, how do you even begin to process that? I never processed it. What happened though was uh, the attorney general was indicted on the same shit. The attorney general was scamming banks? The attorney general was scamming period. She was scamming the jurors. She was stacking time. They was, she was doing a whole bunch of shit. But they gave me the 10 years. So when I went up in the computer, they, well, I ain't going shit. When I asked the CEO, when I seen the shit on the news, you know what I'm saying? I'm pitching a bitch. So I was t- I'm complaining to the CO, and I'm telling the CO, yo, they just gave me all this fucking time. They talking about this bitch getting probation. Uh. But she fucking with the jurors, and she fucking with all this other stuff and all this other stuff. And so um, the CO asked me, like, how much time you get? I told the CO how much time I got. And the CO went up in the computer, and she was like, how much time you got? And I told her again, she said, you got a two to four. They told you ten, but it was actually in there as a two to four? I never went back to court. I never got a chance. This was two days after. Right. I never got a chance to appeal, no nothing. So I don't know if motherfuckers was just like, nah, we're not going to do this. I don't know what it was, but I just, I praised the God. And I told him, I said, I get out. I said, you don't got to worry about me in this situation again. I said, I'm going to do what I got to do. I said, you know my heart and you know what I want to do. Right. Let's make it happen. What were, given that you made it through like the majority of your, 20s or whatever without even getting knocked up what was it like for you to all of a sudden be thrown into this crazy environment that shit wasn't crazy it wasn't that crazy no the girls are pretty tame it girls 
are different than guys. You know, guys got egos. Everybody's tough and yeah. macho and everybody got an attitude. Shit don't even have to be that hard. Right. You know what I'm saying? And shit don't I don't I can't tell you how it is to be in a male prison. You know what I'm saying? Cuz I was scary. in there fucking and kicking in and fucking I said it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> You know? So, do you identify as bisexual? I'm a bisexual. Okay. Listen, I, I'm a, I'm a t- I've said this. I'm pretty sure everybody heard me say this. I was fucked. I think, <laughs> listen, I think women are the most beautiful creatures on this earth. I think Amen. I like looking at them. Mm. Like, I like smelling them. But I like dick. I like penis, wee wee, right. cock, whatever you want to call it. That's what I like. I feel like a lot of women deal with this mm. contradiction. No. But they, they love they love women, but then they also realize getting fucked by a dick is a pretty. No, good. You, don't just say a dick because <laughs> you could go back a dick. No, it has to be attached to a male body. Right, you're not fucking me with no deal though. Right, that's what you're not gonna do. Okay, you know I know I, I can't see nobody rubbing no rubber dick across my mouth and telling me you know just just suck on the tip. What the fuck is that gonna do for you? What is that gonna do for you? What pleasure do you get? Getting me to suck on the tip of your deal, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, how that feel? I don't know. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Right. No, attach, attach. And that's a lot of these chicks' problems. They like fucking plastic things. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they get detached from a man. No, I want to touch a man. I want to feel on his chest. I want to dig my nails in his back. You know what I'm saying? I want that energy. Like, I don't yeah. need no fucking energy for no energizer battery. I can't. Like for as a person who has a penis, I cannot watch a girl fuck another girl with a fake penis. The it shit just is doesn't. So it does not even register in my brain as something that is worth my attention. That could be happening in the corner of the room. I'm not looking over there. No, then a bitch will say, "A bitch, a bitch told me, bitch suck my dick, bitch pull it out your backpack, <laughs> pull it out your backpack." You know what I'm saying? Or I, it's just I don't know to my studs. I love you guys. You guys are cool, but you can't fuck me with no deal though. Right. I don't. I just don't. I don't fuck myself with a deal though. I, I just I, this shit don't. I just can't. I can't. I can't. Was there a lot of uh, gay sex going on in the women's prison? It was enough. Shit. I, wait. 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 Listen. What about the CEOs? They getting down at all? You had CEOs getting down up in there. Mm-hmm. Nayas got fired. Some of them got kids by the people. Anyway. Oh, boy. That's messy. But, like, the dopest thing is seeing two odd-ass um, people, like, <laughs> two odd-ass people get caught for fucking. Really? So you get an old lady and a young, young lady, a young person. Oh, so they're, like, actually looking for this because they're trying to stop you from fucking. You're not supposed to be fucking in jail. Right. I you know, a lot of guys get mad at me when I be talking about this. Like, bitch told me she had a ball up in there and she was up in there fucking. Well, you tell me how you was fucking up in there. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed, you're a whole man. You're supposed to be listening to this. This is supposed to be informative and information. Well, informative and entertaining to you. You trying to compare your jail stories with my jail stories. I guarantee you they want the same. Right. I guarantee you they want to say. I mean, how's a guy going to act like he knows what's going on in the women's prison? And especially given that I've heard stories from... Florida prisons that are so unbelievably different than California or New York or whatever, like the, the not to mention outside the United States. I mean, every prison is going to be different, right? Listen, I went to the hole. How one of the reasons I got parole is because I beat a bitch up. I beat her out of shoes and shit. Why? Because she was talking crazy. I don't like people. I don't. I have a funny uh, thing with noise. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't. And I don't like. You can't talk. I just feel like you can't say anything you want to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You just cannot say. And this bitch, I don't know what type of cereal she had that morning <laughs> and or who told her this was the move or this was the move. And that bitch came in that yard. And when I seen Mighty Mouse walking towards me, and I'm like, God, if this bitch come over here, I'm knocking her out her Rockies. Rockies was the shoes we wore. Right. And I beat that bitch out her shit. She came talking to me about something that has nothing to do with her. Uh-huh. That's one. When she said the first couple of sentences, I couldn't hear anymore. It really? was like, one, one, one. I, I black out sometimes. And when I came back, she was saying some shit like, well, I'm that bitch. And something was like, I got ready to walk away. You know what I'm saying? But how am I going to feel tonight when I lay down on my bunk knowing this ugly, pie-faced, mushroom-head-ass bitch was talking to me crazy? Right. And so when I stepped, I turned back around and knocked that bitch off her feet. 
And I gave her the ass whooping her mother should have. Oof. And that's what got me paroled. Damn. Because nobody could stand her. And I didn't even know that. Wait, that got you paroled? It got me paroled. Why would they lay you out for beating a bitch up? Because they hate her. <laughs> they wanted you out. They, they were, listen, they're like, you're our hero. You can go now. Listen, she um, she accumulated. So she accumulated like 20 extra years for assaults on COs. 20 years? I remember when, you know, they got to take me to the hole. I'm fighting in the yard. So that's a, a, that's a riot area. That's 90 days in the fucking hole. Oof. So they take me to the hole. So when I got to go up on charges, because you got to go in front of the board so they can review this shit. Motherfuckers, when I walk up in there, they're like, what kind of coffee you want? I'm like, I don't drink coffee. They're like, you want donuts? I don't want anything. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers, everybody. I'm, when I say I met every person in the whole prison, I met every person in the whole prison. Right. And they was salute to you. And when I got out, the motherfuckers put me in the biggest cell. Wow. I had two tray orders. I'm talking about my whole, the rest of my state was, they just gave me my way. If you knew that beating her up was going to get you all these privileges, you probably would have beat her up in the first place, even before she offended no, you. No, I wouldn't have. No? I'm not, I'm just not going around beating motherfuckers up. I'm not the baddest bitch in the world. Listen, I, <laughs> I'm not really all that violent or anything, but if I'm going to get two times as much food and I'm imagining that you're like not getting enough food in prison, shit, I'll, you know, um, no, I'm going well, somebody. Whole, it's the whole, um, they give you just, it's the hole. Like, when you in the hole, you only get three meals. That's it. Oh. There's no extra, no commissary, whatever. They gave me two tray orders when I was in the hole. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They cut my time down in the hole. They cut that shit down. When I came out, they put me exactly where I wanted to be, and I was immune from, like, searches or whatever. I forgot I wanted to ask about this. So, you were on the run for how long before you went in? Ooh, I went on the run three times. Three times before that bid? Yeah. Wow. I turned myself in. I got tired of motherfuckers calling the police on me and doing other goofy ass shit. <laughs> yeah, because I was listening to you on this other interview describing how bad it is being on the run oh. and how everybody just treats you like shit and how it just basically is like a life not worth living kind of thing. No, I don't want to say a life not worth living. Well, not literally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you, it's, it's not one of those type of... Being on the run is very expensive. That's one. Right. You know what I'm saying? Two... Um, when you on the run and people know that you're you're pretty much at their mercy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So motherfuckers will talk to you and treat you a kind of way they'll never do when you you have money. You know what I'm saying? But since you need them, they they want to try to get out on you. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's like they probably was this way when you was up. You know what I'm saying? And doing your shit, but you got so much money, yo, that money is loud. Right. Money will silence bullshit. So you don't you don't pay attention to that shit. You don't pay attention to all this little extra hating ass shit. You don't pay attention to none of that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You too busy living your life. You know? And so um you got dudes mad because I don't want to fuck with them, calling the police on me. You what? got motherfuckers. What? Oh my god. Listen. You, Girl uh, turns you down for some pussy, so you call the cops. Motherfuckers wanna wow. now when I'm moving around regular in the world without these charges on me you know what i'm saying you don't got the time of day but now you want to approach me on some weirdo shit because i'm on the run well i can protect you You can't protect your fucking self right you know what i'm saying you can't even fight and does Goofy. this fuck shit up with your kids because you can't really see them man i've made a way to see my kids uh -huh. family dollar peppies you would just meet up with them at public yep. places oh yep meet up with them at public uh, places do and they understand yeah okay yeah. It must have been kind of weird for them to know their mom was on the run, though, right? My kids thought it was the shit. <laughs> really? <laughs> I got my children are like me. I mean, because when I think about it, like doing 10 years, I mean, shit, being on the run might suck. But if I get to avoid doing 10 years, yeah, shit. I mean, that, I mean, that does sound pretty good. I'm not fooling myself into thinking I could actually go on the run at this point in my life, but I'm not going on nobody's. I'm not doing shit. Only th everything I do at this point is legal, 150% legal. Good, that's why I like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't do no. I don't. I don't have to. You know what I'm saying? I told you I had to talk with God, and I told God what I wanted to do, and He has been making a way. I promise you, He has been making a way for me to remain being who I am, right? Without doing anything else, right? He sit me down. He sit me still. You know what I'm saying? And he do everything else. Right. I'm sitting right here with you. Yeah. I'm sitting right here with you. We're here? Like, no, I'm going to say this again. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sitting right here with you. Right. Do you know how many people wish they could be sitting right here with you? They're going to love you, though. 
It's not for me. It's for them. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm having a good time, but you know, really, there's like, there's only one me. There's gonna be hundreds of thousands of them, and we're gonna fuck with it. But um, okay, so when you finally get out, what year is that? I get out in 2018. 2018. So what do you do with your life? Like, oh, and what, 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 God. what have you been thinking about doing that whole time? And are you convinced that you need to go legal now? So when I get out, I get out on parole. You right. know what I'm saying? I had uh, two years of parole. And so when I get out, I go to a halfway house because they wouldn't allow me to go to Philly or they wouldn't allow me to go to Chicago. So they put me in Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. That's where I caught these charges at. Now, I go to a halfway house, and I'm talking about society just scares the fuck out of me. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was more scared of being free than I was being locked up. Mm. I kind of felt some type of way even leaving a jail, leaving a prison. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, my friends are here. Right. The best, Some of the, the best people I've ever met in my life are in jail. Mm. The most creative people I've ever met in my life are in jail. Like, the smartest people I've ever met in my life are in jail. And I know that sound, it's going to sound crazy to a civilian because they can't understand that. But if you, go, the, in the Pennsylvania, in SCI Muncie, you got uh, one of the top geniuses. This bitch is in jail. Right. She's a genius. That, that sounds crazy to people. Like, the bitch can't be that smart. You have no clue. You know, but so what I did, I started working at because I had to. They made me work a job. You know what I'm saying? The pizza like, parlor. We, we want to make sure you ain't stealing nobody's shit. <laughs> so I, I tell you. them, <laughs> <laughs> I, I end up working a job at Subway. Oh, okay. Subway in Pennsylvania, um, well, in Pittsburgh and Shadyside. And what I did was I turned the Subway into like a little club at nighttime. How many people were in the Subway at this club? Um, shit, they used to come in. It used to be, it could be like 70, 80 people in there at the time. How were How you able to get away it? with this? Because I was the only person working the fucking shift because they wouldn't hire no fucking body. So if you're not going to hire nobody to help me, I'm going to run this shit the way I want to. Okay. So you just have 80 people in there? They, they come in. They and, come in. And I'm assuming nobody's buying subs? And no, people are bad shit because uh. here's the thing. We closed at 3 o'clock, so when people are um, leaving the club and shit, they're coming over there. Some people, I'm, I was a cute girl. I'm still am, I still am a cute one. Yes, you are. You know, people come up in there, want to kick it. I talk shit. I got the music on. I got a playlist. I did twerk contests, everything. Right. And we kicked it in that bitch. <laughs> we kicked it. How long, started, how long were you able to pull this off for? I never got in trouble for it. I never got in trouble for it. That's um, amazing. Once again, I was the only person running that shift. You know what I'm saying? So I did what I wanted to do. So I quit there. I quit there because I had a stalker. Oh, boy, really? Oh, God. I had a stalker. We'll talk about him later. But... um. I quit there and I started working for the chick who owned that stuff where I started working for her brother. Okay. And something in me, I got tired of this. I got tired of working for these people. I come in here Sunday through Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I'm here all fucking day. I had absolutely no life. They close in the middle of the night. You want to talk crazy to me. These ugly ass customers, customers want to talk crazy to me. You want to act like this was the straw that broke the camel back. Mm. This bitch gave me a three cent tip. And that's why I say you could keep it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the the manager, she, you're tripping. This three cents. What bitch you taking? <laughs> three cents. And I knew I was coming close to my parole. Like, I did everything I was supposed to do up in that restaurant. You got motherfuckers want to set me up. Everybody want to fight for the bottom. I don't give a fuck about this pizza shop. Mm. You want to argue with me about motherfucking pepperoni slices and sausages or how many chicken wings or how many shrimp to put on the salad. Fuck y'all. Mm. This ain't my shit. You know? And insults to, to add insults to injury, the, the owners used to come up in there, you know what I'm saying? And like I was a fucking circus act. I think you were meant to be self-employed. I am. Yeah. So I quit. I took a, um, I took a, I met, ended up meeting, um, I met this dude who introduced me to this dude. And I had to talk with God. Once again, let me tell, tell you about God. I had to talk with God. I said, God, look, this is not what I want to do. I'm not made for this. I'm not made to work for nobody. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'm going to give myself six months. If something don't happen in six months, maybe that's a sign that I just need to work for somebody. Mm. It was on that last day of that six month. And I get a phone call. I ran the phone call from this guy named AJ. You know what I'm saying? One of the moles in Chicago. And that, that's my family right there, the most. Mm. Um, but. You talking about PGF Nook? 
I don't know who that is. He's from over there. He from over where? Motown. Oh. He's a new Chicago rapper. Oh, he a new Chicago. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't lived in Chicago. You should tap in though. I'm going to tap in just because you said this. Now my children, I'm pretty sure they know who it's that is. It's very aggressive. Oh, that's why right my You got the craziest gun collection I've ever seen in a rap video. No, we won't. Hey, look. <laughs> <laughs> um, but AJ, give me a random call. You know, people have been checking up on me since I had been so quiet. Mm. So um, AJ, AJ call and ask. He say, you need anything? I say no and hang up. Man, you I'm in my feelings because I'm still at this fucking job and God ain't made no move. So something was like, just call him back and tell, you, tell him what you need. Now, this is random as fuck. I call him back. I say, yeah, I do need something. I say, I need a cameraman. I want to film this reality show. Every Because everybody I had hit up wasn't doing shit. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers weren't even fucking with me because I'm a fuck up in their eyes. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They just want me to finish parole. <laughs> That's what they want me to do. Right. So he introduced me to this cameraman. Next couple of weeks, me and him out filming. Next thing I know, I got Freeway Rick Ross. Next thing I know, I quit that job. Yeah. <laughs> so what, you just saw the vision and making content in general, like like in terms of doing the reality show? Because now you're doing the YouTube thing as well. It's like there's a lot of different ways to get your story out there. Well, how the YouTube thing came about with this particular, I was trying to, I was trying to tell my guy a story, mm. and I'm always talking to him about some jail shit. I'm always talking to him. I'm always talking to myself for the phone or some stuff like that. Not to say I'm crazy, but whatever. Right. And he was just like recorded, so I recorded it, mm. and it just went. Right. It worked. And so that that's how the YouTube channel came about. It was just the idea to sort of film yourself having the kind of natural conversations you were gonna have. Yep, because he didn't want to hear me talk. <laughs> and you sort of started out with like a lot of the prison stuff. Did you find that that's what people wanted to hear you talk about, or no? That's um, you just want to get the early, earlier parts of your life out there, like the the easy stuff. I want to get the like the portion that brought me here, and then go back. Mm. You know, so the prison story is long. I did, I did almost three years. Right. So that's long, like, yeah. and that's recent. So I tell these stories, and then I have something now um, called a C-Hive, which is the membership stuff. And that um, that's exclusive content about, like, the stripping and me fucking with the pastors and mm. all this other stuff. And a lot of people think... Um, <laughs> There's a, a lot, lot going people, on here. Yeah, wow. yeah, a lot of people be like, man, this can't be real. And I be thinking like, shit, you just don't know. Right. But people like they they um censor themselves or they don't remember like I'm 40 years old. Hmm. I've lived life. I can remember getting my pamper change. Do you know how much shit you do in 40 years? Yeah. You can remember getting your diaper changed? Yes. I remember who was changing it too. Maybe that's what happens if you don't smoke weed. You can remember being a baby. <laughs> Cause I can't remember shit. It's weird. I can remember like Walking with the dog outside the gate, and my mama yelling for me. I'm in my pampers, no shoes on. Really? What's your vision? Like, where do you see all this going for you? You've kind of realized that you have this power as a media personality, and that's growing. But then you also you seem like you're very capable of running like probably a lot of different kind of businesses and stuff. Yeah, I have a, a media marketing company. I do management. Like I say, I manage some pretty big people. Right. But. What I want to do, I want to make movies. I want to do this, mm. and I want to make movies. Or I want to make a show. I want to show like BMF. Like I have so much content wrote and so much content in my head, and then I just like talking. Definitely. I believe. What's it been like the past few months of like really trying to get this wave of attention and having like an actual fan base on YouTube? It's been crazy. I get way more love than I get hate. I have people pretending to be me. Oh, wow. Well. I have people that's pretending um, to have new to me. You ain't got to pretend, motherfucker. I release new calendars every year. New one come out in May. Really? <laughs> yes. Wow. I, and I do good on them. Damn. I do good. Um, Respect. I have a, a big following. I have a loyal following. It's, magn it's a wonderful feeling. I never thought I'd be at this place. Right. I mean, it's got to be pretty uh, thrilling. Oh, I thought I wrote questions down. I guess I didn't write any down. I already knew what I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. Yeah, I see. I was checking to see if I had written anything down, but I guess I already had it all off the top. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, but so the calendars. Mm -hmm. I got an audio. I have an audio book coming out. Right. And I have this um, this short series 
on um, YouTube. Like I said, it's for the uh, members for the Sea Hive. The Sea Hive. Yes, it's called Random but True Stories of a Delusional Chick in the Hood. These, so that's kind of you've come a long way from like memoirs of a bitch. You've got no. a lot more descriptive with your title, right? Well, the random but true stories from a delusional chick in the hood is I don't think females like to admit how naive we are, mm. you know, but it's OK to admit that you you don't get it all. Right. You know what I'm saying it's OK to be it's OK not to be OK. You know, like when I, I I was talking about today, when I was younger, what I thought a bad bitch was. Some shoes from Payless, <laughs> a wig from the beauty supply, synthetic, because that's all the money you got, right. and a dress from Rainbow. That was a bad bitch in my head. Mm. You know? So it's like people hate to admit. It's like the first time you ride a, a first time a female ride a dude having sex. Bitch, you're not sexy. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. You like you scooting. You know? <laughs> it's like you don't know. You just don't know. Yeah. You know? It's just random shit. It's, a, it's just truthful stuff. A few story. months ago, me and my girl had a threesome with a girl where it was her first threesome. And oh my God. Like her, her, her like movements. It was so cute. I'm like, oh my God, you ain't even done this. Like, like you're, you're, I could feel the nervousness in her body. It's yeah, fucking it's, trippy. It's, it's, the shit just be, it's like, it's okay. Mom, my guy told me when well, he was talking to other people, but he said something. He said most of these dudes don't even know how they bitch eat. Can I get a salad? Shit, give me some chicken. I'm finna fuck it up. You right. know, I'm licking my fingers and everything. I'm comfortable in my own skin. Right. You know, and that's I, it's like I'm cool with it. I love it. It's a great story. So you're at a very happy, content place in your life. I'm not content. I'm not happy, content. but I'm not content. I want more. Mm. I want more. I can see my stuff on television. You know, like this. I love this. Yeah. You're really, really good at like this. Like, my name is right there. It is. <laughs> my name is right there. Like, yo. That's amazing. Don't cover my shit up neither, Ab. Absolutely not. Don't, don't you dare. This no, is no. right here. This is going to go on the wall. We're going to memorialize this, these walls once we move into our new space. So it'll, it'll be up there forever. I appreciate that. What are you uh, getting out of your current relationship that wasn't right about a lot of the other relationships that oh. you were in? Stability, support, um, emotional support, mm. understanding, love, like real love, like not fake love, like real love. Right. Like a motherfucker who I could wake up, hey, ain't gonna be mad at me because I'm waking him up in the middle of the night. Baby, you okay? You right. know what I'm saying? And the sex is the shit. <laughs> <laughs> I have never. How'd you I meet have, him? Damn. Really? After you got out? After I got out. How long you been together? Um, almost two years. He definitely seems like he has a good sense of humor about some of your crazy stories since he's rolling on the floor laughing his ass off over there. Even, <laughs> even, even at the somewhat nasty stories, I noticed that he's still laughing his but ass off. That, that's the thing. He has never tried... To, one of the biggest problems I have in relationships is I have a big personality. I got a lot of energy. It's like I'm a big kid. I'm goofy. I'm, I'm, I'm me. Mm. He's comfortable with allowing me to be me. I'm very strong will. I have a strong mind. I can't run over him. Mm. I can run over a lot of dudes. Mm. You know, I can run over a lot of dudes, a lot of females. I get a lot of butch energy. You know, you're just a bitch. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can't handle me. That's, I'm not for you, and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? But don't try to attack me because I have my dude get at you. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of dudes try to change. They they like the stuff that comes with me, the perks. A lot of perks come with me. You know, they like that. But when they get me, they try to change who I am. Mm. You know, or don't talk like that. Or is you looking at that nigga in the face? Why the fuck, nigga? You're not a pimp. Why I got to keep my eyes to the floor? You know, right. and he that's not him. I can tell he's really my best friend. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I can tell him every fucking I'll talk about the craziest shit I can say. And he understands it because he understands me. And it's not to be like and I ask him some crazy shit because I want to know, you know, I don't I don't have to go nowhere else outside of my relationship to get comfort. Mm. You know, I don't have to go outside my relationship to 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 find friendship. And he was my friend first you know and i can't i'm not gonna try to take away his manhood i'm not gonna try to make that's the man you know i don't run shit mm. you know a lot of women want to run a man and then complain about these men not being men bitch because you're trying to run them <laughs> he's cool being a toddler right you know so well it's good to hear so 
I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just very uh, optimistic. I know you're still new on YouTube and everything, but it feels like you're going in the right direction. I hope this interview uh, helps push that along further because definitely you have a lot to offer. I appreciate you so much. Aww. And it's like I was coming up, it's like, I wonder what Alvin going to say. <laughs> I wonder what he going to say. Right. But it's like, I feel like home. We're at home. No, I mean, I see it. Like, I've seen so many of these, like, really kind of charismatic, like, prison YouTube guys pop off. And it's like, I, I kind of see how, like, you're kind of using that as, like, a cheat code to get them to sort of pay attention. But I feel like you, as, like, an overall podcaster, personality, whatever, you have a lot to offer. So I'm very, very optimistic about your I appreciate potential. that. I appreciate that. I've been on a few people um, platform. Shout out to Banky Pound. Um, oh, I had him on, too. 16 to life. I've been on his platform. Um, I did another platform. I did Veracity TV, nice. you know, and it's like, look, right now I have the fastest growing channel on YouTube. Wow. I'm about to hit 50,000 subs in three months. You know, I'm doing a thousand subs a day. Wow. That is really good. Yeah. I have a video. I think I got my first video that's about to hit a million. Really? It's a short. Wow. I got... I have plenty of content and I have a story to tell, you know? Mm. And sometimes I could be all over the way because I got, you know, all over the place because I got a lot of energy. But the shit dope. Definitely. Can't, can't take it away. It's dope. For sure. Um, do you actually react to anything? Listen, <laughs> my first three videos were reaction videos. Okay. I'm about, I'm about to tell you this. I can say this now. I can say it. Okay. So I did uh, three, three reaction videos. And they 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 were going, you know what I'm saying? I had numbers for a new YouTuber, I had decent numbers. So I had <laughs> the 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 production company from the TV network reach out to me. And they offered me a couple, um, they offered me to be on a few shows. Mm. Then they come back, I turned down it, you know. So they come back and say, Well, I wanna find some money because I think you need your own show. And it's like, okay, and motherfuckers still tapping in. But I know, I know, like, anything I touch turns into gold. I I know people like, what the fuck you mean? Anything I touch turns into gold. Mm. I mean, I think, yeah, you should definitely pursue stuff like TV or, you know, bigger, bigger plays. But I also think you should really double down on your YouTube and go hard making your content look as good as possible best quality audio figure out i don't know if you want to have other people that you're going to talk to on your channel etc like because the tv sh shit is good as like a growth opportunity mm -hmm. but it's like you could really build like a business like if you have like a consistent podcast or show or however you want to structure it on your channel like that gives you a lot of leverage having your own platform you yeah know? right now i got um I have people offering me different sponsorship packets and stuff oh, yeah. like that. Listen, some stuff you just got to turn down, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like what? I, I ain't trying to shit on nobody. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's this Rose company. You know what I'm saying? They keep trying to get at me to... to what I'm telling prison stories. Bitch, why am I going to have a bouquet behind my head? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Am I going to put a bouquet, by, a bouquet of roses? Right. Overly priced roses. We can go to Dollar Tree and get this shit. You know what I'm saying? You want me to put this right here to sell my people, and I'm calling these my people because mm. they fuck with me. You want me to sell my people this shit right here. It wasn't no roses in prison. Right. You know what I'm saying? I had to tell them, I say, listen, I appreciate the opportunity, but not right now. Mm. Nothing I'm talking about got anything to do with it. Yeah. Because it's weird. Like, on one hand, your audience will respect you just trying to get a bag because they kind of, like, seen your come up and everything. But then at the same time, your audience will kind of think less of – your voice if you're willing to promote things that you clearly don't give a fuck about so it's you always are kind of trying to balance those two things i'm, I'm not trying to balance i just can't <laughs> I'm say no, not, yeah. no i'm not trying to balance that yeah because you know damn well you know damn well they ain't got nothing to do what i'm going got going on mm. you know i'm not a thirsty person for that type of shit. i'm just not thirsty for it you right. know everybody's like yeah i'm gonna take this i'm gonna take this i'm getting everything i ain't turning shit down no, i'm turning some shit down that's not right right that's just, you can't come on my st i curse all day long it feels good to me right. you know what i'm saying it, it feels good to the core of me so you're not gonna come on my my, my channel selling bibles <laughs> <laughs> you know so it's it just it just is what they it do is. brand deals for bibles i don't know but i'm just oh, saying right. i don't think you should <laughs> 
Right. I don't think you should. Not over here. I was listening to somebody and they were talking about shooting somebody and they're like, I pulled out my Bible. I'm like, well, I never heard it like that. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, what? <laughs> I'm an outsider. Um, I appreciate you coming on so much. Hey, I appreciate you having me. This is like, shit, this is better than Oprah. <laughs> you get a perk. You get a perk. <laughs> Let's go. Everybody go subscribe to her channel. Please do. CC Reacts. Enjoy that shit. Share it. It's something. Watch with your guy. Watch with your girl. Listen. Show her some love. Yeah. Run the comments up, the like bar, subscribe, etc. Don't come on there talking shit. Please don't. Be part of something big that is growing right now. Get I in on the ground y'all. floor. It's like Bitcoin. You know what? It is. I y'all heard it. That's the metaphor. <laughs> Let's go. CC, appreciate you. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, OnlyFans, all that shit. Like, comment, and subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate y'all. Bye.